thank you all for coming. It's uh, our Inclusivity and Diversity uh, Advisory Committee meeting, Thursday, June 2nd. It is 6.30. I call the meeting to order. And can I have a roll call, please? Sure. Oops. <laughs> do you have the names? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> Ro Nwasu. Uh, Brad Gray Ice Brandt. Katie McGrath. Hello. Rainer. Uh, thanks, Amy. Uh, Rainer Ampro, Ananda Nicholas. I'm here. Peter Shum. Here. And Councilor Grinstead. Thank you. I think I'm here too. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we work and gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people. This Algonquin nation have lived on this land for thousands of years long before the arrival of the European settlers, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to present in this territory. Uh, adoption of the agenda, please. We resolve that the agenda of the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee meeting dated Thursday, July 7th, 2022, be adopted as presented. Ananda had her hand up. I need a seconder, please. Aiden, is there any questions about our massive agenda tonight? <laughs> Seeing none, so all in favor? We are good to go. Um, disclosures of pecuniary interest, um, are there any? I see none. We need to adopt the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee meeting of Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 be adopted. A mover and a seconder, please. Ananda, I need a seconder. Peter, um, any questions, concerns about the minutes as written? Seeing none, so all in favor, please. Good to go. So we have one presentation tonight. Erin, uh, you're going to talk to us about the cultural night market. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to share my screen. Hang on. Yes, please. And this is my agenda. Uh, sure. Go to this presentation. And I'm going to go uh, almost in mode. Everybody see that okay? We can. Great. Here we go. Um, um I, there. Great. Thanks. <laughs> um, hi. Nice to meet all of you. Um, Considering that it is not a very lengthy meeting and there's not lots on the agenda, I welcome anyone to ask questions as we go through the slides individually on the subject that we're talking about instead of waiting to the end. I'm more than welcome for that to happen. Um, so a bit of the background, which you um, are all likely aware of, um, the Cultural Night Market Project was selected for the My Main Street Community Activator Program um, that was issued from Fed Dev. Um, but uh, administered by um, the Canadian Urban Institute. The town received funding to host a multicultural night market that will feature food vendors, artisans from various ethnicities, and creating an opportunity for the NT attendees to become more acquainted with their neighbors and the diverse cultural backgrounds they come from. Um, the event announcement was embargoed until June 8th, which was actually quite a substantial amount of time from the time we had been awarded um, and requested to sign the agreement. Um, and immediately we circled the press, circulated the press release that shared the news that we had been awarded the grant. Thanks, Robin. So some of the elements that were presented in the grant were positions like uh, graphic designer, photographer, that there would be visual artists that would be helping to create <clears throat> the art cubes, which would be part of the pageantry and also one of the activities. And I can expand a little bit more on that in a moment during the night market, that there would be performances, not only by musicians, but potentially storytellers, comedians, um, local groups, youth groups, many opportunities to program. There's um, we're not held to any particular um, requirements there in the grant. Um, and that there will be some legacy pieces that will remain in town. So our cubes being one of them, um, that we'll have them there as long as the weather permits. We do plan to seal them. So we hope that that will be sometime through, the, through to the fall. Um, there will be a, pot, a piece of modular seating um, that you'll see in the next 
slide as an example that will also be a legacy piece that will be on wheels and hopefully it will be able to be used at other events, the market, potentially down at the park from, for when events are running there. And then an accessible picnic table. Um, ideally, it will be more than one, but I think the price of wood is going to govern that for us, but we'll see. So we'll see how that plays out in the context of the budget allotment. For the art cues, which there is an example there, um, that's one artist uh, per side of the cube. So that's where intent, we budgeted loosely for three. So the hope is to be able to engage 12 artists. We are also going to be sourcing an artist that will be able to create one, potentially two pieces that are only outlined so that the community can come together and collectively finish painting the pieces as one of the activities throughout the night market. And you can see the image on the left, that's the modular seating. Again, how many pieces we'll be able to get will be based on the price of wood and all honesty. So hopefully we'll be able to get um, at least two pieces there. Can I just question, Robin? Yeah, sorry, I just, I, I mean, I love the art cube idea. We've talked about it a few times. When you said that you have potentially 12 like artists on it, there are different sides to it, right? But during the evening, you could only really do the four sides and make it pop. I, I guess I'm unstable. A yes. little bit, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like once it's um, being painted in the evening, would it uh, not be wet? Like you couldn't really move it around? Right. Correct. So I think what Robin is saying is, because uh, she's cutting in and out, correct me if I'm wrong, a cube is six-sided, but you can't turn it over onto the side once it's been painted. So we're only going to be able to do four, five sides at maximum at that one time. And we may not do all of them. Like we may choose one of the cubes with opposing side panels so that two groups of people could do. And again, we could do a sign up where you get to help participate for a certain amount of time and then move on to the next person who signed up. So some will be uh, already created and painted by the visual artist and some um, will be, and we can work out that number, some will be community participatory experiences. And in all fairness, it's always going to have to rest on one side anyway. So we're only looking at maximum five sides that, that need to be done anyways. So do we need to discuss like the ratios of how many we're going to have on site to complete that night? Because um, you're going to have to source these out pretty darn soon to get them done. Yep. So it would just, we can source the artists and then there are certain artists that we do know are more, um, geared toward that who've already done community work workshops mural installations with community participation so that we can certainly with intention make those selections while keeping in mind diversity local when when we're able to okay so so you want to just go and see who you can firm up and then the sides of the the cubes that aren't spoken for will work with. Yeah, and there's ways that you can expand upon that too. And it's, again, we're in the preliminary stages of the active determining what the activities will be, but we can also run coloring sheets for the same art that is being painted on the cube. So maybe you're not getting, a, you're not able in that moment to paint on the cube, but you can take home your coloring sheet and create your own version of what you think that should look like. And we can certainly uh, hopefully find an opportunity to post those, Graham, Nick Smith Center. Um, so <laughs> so there's, we, can, uh, we can expand on the experience. So expanding on that, um, maybe we have some kind of contest so that people actually do submit them at a later date and, and uh, have some kind of... <laughs> you know, recreation prize package that we give away with that. Like, you know, a couple of passes, a couple of skating passes, whatever. Like it doesn't have, like, it's more so just to get the children and adults alike involved. Yep. 
I think there's always, especially around art, you can certainly uh, do age ranges. Absolutely. Because it would be wonderful to see what some of the um, adults in the community, how they would portray the art piece. Perfect. Councillor Grinstead, I'm not sure if you can tell that Jody has her hand Oh, I up. just, yeah, I just saw you, that. Okay. Oh, Thank sorry. you, jo Jody. Oh, it's in her beautiful jungle of plants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, um, I'm, I'm, I only see so many at one time, too. Okay. Yes. I, I'm not sure, Erin, um, if you're looking for additional artists to connect with, but the um, Algonquin College Diversity and Inclusivity uh, Committee recently worked with three exceptional artists uh, from the Ottawa area on, on um, three separate murals um, at, across the campuses. And this is this is so much in their wheelhouse. So if, if you are still looking for artists to connect with, um, I'd be we happy are. to. Uh, okay, perfect. I, I'll, yes, I'll uh, get the contact information to you. Yeah, and um, likely what we'll do, and I've done it in other projects, is we'll, we'll curate some of the artists to know that we will get a caliber of work and like I said the ones when we're doing participatory where we know that they can do strong outlines and, and sort of make it easy for the community to come and paint um, and then do a small proportion of that and then do all call as well so I like to have opportunity to wrangle it a little bit but also make it available for all. I see your hand you can just give me one second okay um, just on, on that note um, I'm going to play the counselor's hat, put the counselor's hat down here now. We have to make sure that as many, as many possible local people are used for all of this. We can't be, we can't be going, we have such a strong artist, um, uh, artists and musicians and everything local. And we, I think that this is um, something like any one of our events that we really need to um, support our local first. Um, I'm not saying that we can't go out, but I just think that we have to try to fill as many spots with local people as possible. The other thing I was thinking too is, it doesn't have to be a professional artist either. Like, you know, L'Arche, I'm just thinking L'Arche or community living or something, they probably would love to do a panel uh, on one of these boxes. Aiden, your question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you kind of had any like themes that you wanted the cubes to follow or if you were just going to give the freedom to the artists to kind of decide with that. And I guess depending on who the artist is, it'll kind of fall into place. Um, loosely, because it will fit in under the theme of the cultural, multicultural night market as a whole but I don't think we'll really specify um, as to what theme we would like the art to be around. I, I think it would just be that. And in the selection of diverse art, like the artists from diverse backgrounds, I think that they will, by nature of their work, bring, bring that theme with them. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was just thinking it would be nice to have them be centered around, you know, different ethnic experiences of local people just again showcasing diversity through art which I think is exactly what you want to do anyway so that's great. <laughs> Thank you Aiden. Thanks. Can we move on to the next slide? Yep. Um, so the staffing status of working on producing the event is we sent um, circulated a request for expression of interest for an event manager. And those went to uh, Meeting Planners International um, and their uh, database, their, pardon me, their local Eastern Ontario database. Um, the Algonquin Event Management Program, one of the instructors of that program, um, some colleagues that I know as well who do this for a living. Um, and we have since uh, brought on the contract for the event manager and they Loosely began today, we had our first uh, briefing meeting um, and they will be on until August 29th with us. Can you let us know who that is, please? Yep, her name is Chloe Park, P-A-R-K. And where does she come from? 
She currently works at the Glee BIA in programming and marketing, and she has a background and graduated from the Algonquin program, which is how she found out about this through the instructor. Thank you. Yeah, the instructor sent through to grads. You're welcome. And then there's also another position that we've put through is uh, posting for a part-time coordinator, which is currently live on our site and has been circulated through OnTrack, I believe, as well as our social platforms. Um, that's live right now until July 11th. And that position would be here in our, not in Canada, here in our prior um, for a four day work week, about six hours. And so they would be, um, helping more with the execution and logistics of the event. And um, I see it being a great opportunity for somebody who maybe just recently graduated or is interested in learning about event management because they will have a couple of layers of mentors as well. So that could be something um, that would be a good learning experience. So we're looking for that. And that would begin six weeks out. So in a couple of weeks. And there's a strong likelihood that we'll have some volunteers from the event management program because they were saying that they have students in house until August and some of those students need to have their field hours so we might be able to take advantage and benefit nice. from that as well. And poor Ananda she keeps losing her. Oh. I'm, I'm so sorry you guys I'm having internet issues, but I, I think I've got it fixed now. Okay. Is there anything you would like recapped or did you have any questions before moving on? I missed most of the presentation, unfortunately. Um, have we had a chance to reach out to any vendors? Have, has anyone confirmed? We haven't reached out to vendors yet. We've just engaged our event manager and I had our my first briefing meeting with them today and that is high on the list. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. I, and there were again, some I recommendations uh, that Jody had put through as well, I believe, in her email. Um, so next steps is, uh, which started today, walk the event manager through the scope, budget, and timelines for the project, develop and execute a marketing plan, uh, begin programming, which will take into consideration the recommendations from this committee and still open to more because we've not moved on uh, to booking yet and contracting. Uh, sourcing suppliers and vendor call out. Great. Um, I think I passed this message along, but just in case my memory is um, when we're booking anything to do with drag shows uh, and that nature, and I'm all for it. I have, you know, my transgender daughter was a gay boy first and did lots of drag shows and they were absolutely so much fun to go to. But I'm just going to caution that going to a club to see a drag show is different than on the streets because we can't control the age groups on the streets. And I just want to make sure that, um, how do I say this without offending anybody, but that the attire is is appropriate for age groups that are going to see it because I know last uh, the last market there was um, some comments made and uh, they appreciate the diverse and they appreciate being exposed to it but some of the costumes um, were not appropriate for children or or our seniors were uncomfortable so we just we want to be open. We want to explore everything, but we want to do it in a way that doesn't exclude anybody because of something else. It's, it's supposed to be inclusive for everyone. So I just, I don't know how, if I'm saying this without offending anybody or, or whatever, but I don't mean to, but I just, we want to be conscious of everybody's, everybody's feelings. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And drag is only one component of yes. entertainment of the community. There's a many opportunities and um, for um, the LGBT, 2S LGBTQ plus community to participate um, other than drag. So, but no, certainly and, I do understand. And I know that uh, 
the community is totally like there's a huge market for it. There's a huge, you know, um, people are enjoying it very much in, in a lot of uh, different venues here in town and whatnot. And it's great. Um, like I said, I, I love, you know, and I, I have some friends from that time of my life when, when Brent was Brent and did drag. So it's, it's a lot of fun, but I just want to make sure that we're careful that we don't offend anybody as well. Sorry, I had to say it. Um, any questions? Eden. I'm, I feel like that kind of contradicts our idea of promoting inclusivity and acceptance in the community by, I mean, I do understand like there is a difference between an all ages drag show versus a 19 plus drag show. And I think we can, you know. And that's I think all I'm saying. Queens, yeah, the Queens I think would be respectful of that too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, like with language and all of that, there's yeah. drag story time, right? Like, I, yeah. I think, I think that's an easy, an easy oh. thing to talk to, you know, just to ensure that it's for all ages. And, yeah. and that's instead all, of that's saying, please I... hold back, you know, just say it's for all ages. And yeah, yeah. exactly. Any other questions? So Erin, I'm just, uh, I think we're all a little anxious to see more details and more planning. Um, I don't, like, it's July. Like, it is July. This event is like seven weeks, yep. eight weeks. Yeah, so um, I think that we should meet again so that, you know, once you get our events coordinator um, rocking and rolling with this and, and, and some stuff um locked in um and of course if we can help in any way but it sounds like like we have the staff for this so that's great um but i think that maybe we should meet uh if not next week the week after so that you can kind of firm up some stuff and 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 help us to kind of sigh relief that that things are coming together does that make does that is that good with everybody? What do you think? Do, could I just ask if that if there's an opportunity to provide information or status updates in a different format? I I don't know that we would need to pull everybody together for a meeting. We could I could certainly circulate information as it's you know as updates are provided to me as well. I just wanted to say, voice um, that. Yeah, I just think that if 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 we're getting updates with everything that's booked, that that's just piecemeal and it's kind of, I would kind of like a so maybe hold off and do it uh, like a kind of a, a bigger picture instead of saying oh we booked this one oh we booked this one like it, it what you did today to give us kind of that overall bigger picture is good. Um, I think uh, again, I think that it's important that this committee have a say in things as well. Like I know that people have given you lists of different, you know, people to um, contact and, and whatnot. Um, but I do, I do believe this committee should have a strong um, sentiment or say in, in how the, the night rolls out. Um, I also would love to chat more about like, the plan uh, of how, how things are gonna be set up downtown and stuff like that. Like, I think all of that stuff is important. Um, like, where are we gonna have this? Where are we gonna have that? You know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I, I have a vision in my head, just I guess I watch too many sappy movies with this kind of stuff, but um, you know, just uh, again, th this committee was instrumental in, in bringing this idea and and yes Graham and you are you know very instrumental in getting the grant so quickly and, and it's bigger and better than where we ever dreamed it would be the first year but I do want the committee to have some some voice in it Ananda would it be possible that we could um communicate via email so that people were able to jump in and out as they would like to provide input or feedback and suggestions and 
not need to jump in if they don't feel like they have anything to add. I think, uh, especially during the summer months, it's very difficult to schedule continuous meetings, but that email is a really good way to keep everybody up to date. I know we've sure. all consented to sharing our email addresses. Yeah, yeah and that's and that's that's fine too. I just uh, again, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we all felt we all felt confident. I mean, I'm sure it's going to get, I, I shouldn't, I'm, I'm not saying it correctly. You know what I mean? Like if we just, it's, it's coming up fast and it's like, before you know it, it, it will be here. So, um, so maybe if we just, you know, week to 10 days, maybe you could share an overall view of how things are coming together and what we're missing or what we need more of, or, or, or maybe you showing the overall view uh, to the committee, the committee might say, oh, have you thought of doing this? Or did you find this or whatever? Just, just so that the committee has a voice in it all. But I suggest, Councillor Grinstead, that um, like two weeks would be July 21st. So obviously we're getting close. Yeah. But I think we have Aaron some time with the event coordinator to you know, formulate some, like you said, uh, ideas around the layout, um, who they've contacted, you know, how successful they've been with getting uh, getting responses back, that kind of thing, give a little update at that meeting on the 21st. And again, any feedback, uh, like you suggested, Ananda, could, could come in at any time. We're happy to, to accept it and share what, what's happening. Maybe that could be sort of a regroup meeting then to, to just go over where we're at, any other ideas that have come forward and, and get the committee's, um, you know, comments more formally on on the layout and, and that kind of thing, like, like you're suggesting. So two weeks gives us time to get a little bit of work done little thing present prepared for you and then um and then have a little chat maybe our meeting could be a little less formal um yep. than a normal IDAC meeting but just uh just this group get together on a on a zoom call that we could just maybe you know do just like tonight yeah and yeah. we could yeah and, and i mean it would take 20 minutes like it it's really you know and if people want to join they can but if they can't they they don't need to and we could send out whatever by email the next as well i just Again, those who want to have a voice and can or want to be in person, great. Um, they can voice it by email too, like we said. But like I said, I have a vision. I'm hoping, you know, like I just, I'm just excited about it. And, and I, it, it's, uh, it's going to be a great event. And I just, uh, I'm a hands-on person, so sorry. I'm just trying to. No, that's okay. And uh, <laughs> and just to share, Chloe is really excited about the project too. It's okay. a, a great opportunity. She, you know, to to showcase um, a lot. You know, many. I was going to say multicultures again. Many cultures to showcase some of the local artists and vendors and and musicians and. Um, yeah, she's she's the person for sure, and and uh, I don't know if not likely would the committee know this, but I come from events, event production, talent buying, so she will also um, have uh, a gatekeeper <laughs> in a little bit of a way. Um, but I also want to extend, you know, if you are very much about music and want to participate in reviewing selections when we get opportunity, you know, when we've had some, then then please just, just let me know like midstream because I think because it is coming in fast, if we're potentially waiting for feedback and then not engaging. Um, so, you know, if you have suggestions, happily take them. If you, you know, Aiden maybe are saying, I really like to participate in the visual, you know, selection of visual artists, you can certainly reach out to us at, at any time. It doesn't have to be within the meeting format. Right. So I'm just, uh, maybe we'll send out an email tomorrow, just, you know, reminding people that they can, that they can share mm -hmm. ideas by email. Um, and what I, what, um, we haven't determined them yet, but Chloe and I, um, likely Chloe, uh, we can send out the deadlines as well, just to give an, an yeah. idea, because when we'll do the calls, we'll set deadlines based on what our work back schedule needs to be. So we can share those as well. So um, the committee and share that with you know um, any people they're recommending. Right, so just uh, let's remind committee members to hit reply all so everybody sees what everybody's saying because then that's the way that we do, uh, we keep everybody in the loop. Um, I know that uh, Jody sent an awesome list of different uh, 
performers and and, and uh, whatnot. And so, um, I have no doubt that every avenue is going to be covered. Um, the one thing that I know we talked about a long time ago, and I just wondered if anybody um, has approached Stan at Shoppers to see if we can utilize that section of um, the parking lot, because if we had you know, vendors and whatnot down along the street, maybe that area could be where the stage is set up and henna dance and, and whatnot. I, I don't know, like I just see that the street being all vendors and food and then the parking lot right there could be like a dance location with a stage and whatnot. It could just, I don't know. I just think it would be pretty cool. I just remembering that one movie that was set up in there too, how it looks, it was so intimate with the walls and everything. It was just so, so cozy and nice. I can connect with Robin offline to find out how to, how to best approach that and, and, and speak to him. Yeah. And if, uh, I mean, I know Stan quite well. So, I mean, not that he wouldn't, you know, be open to anybody talking to him, but if, if there's anything that a committee member can do to help, let us know too. What, what did you say earlier today, Lynn? Be careful what you wish. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> honestly, I mean, if if uh, if that takes a little bit of uh, something off the plate, and I can go in and chat with Stan and ask him if it would be possible, because it's going to be in the evening. Yes, he's still open till ten, but there's the, there's a lot of parking everywhere else that can you know that can be used. I think, I think it would be quite cool. Anyways, anybody else have any questions? I've rambled on enough, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you, Erin, great work. You're welcome. Very exciting. Oh, Ananda, go ahead. I was just wanting to make sure that everyone saw the notes uh, that Ro sent in yeah. place of being here. All right, I just wanted to make sure everyone had gotten that. Yeah. Um, could they be, are they with recommendations that, or are they for the, the committee internally? Uh, they were, there were some questions regarding the event. So if Erin hasn't received those, if we could make sure she gets a copy of those, that would be fantastic. I don't think I got them either, but I will make sure I find them in the morning. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I do believe, just give me one second, um, because Kayla had, responded and sent them off. Oh, so Kayla had responded because uh, because Roe had said that she had Is that today or yesterday. It was July 4th. So Monday, she had said she wasn't going to be able to make oh. it. She had uh, got pulled in for a shift, um, but she had some things that she wanted to share and um, Kayla had asked her to share them and, and to see, see that, uh, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, um, I haven't seen anything since. So I'm wondering if Ro maybe didn't get a chance to send them. Did you see some, Ananda? I, I did see them. Uh, I, I still have, I, don't, I still don't have a complete list of everybody's email, but, um, I think I can scrape it out. Unfortunately, I'm supposed to be on the road in about an hour, so I, no I may not be able to do that today. So That's yeah, don't worry go. about it. I think that uh, we'll either have Kayla reach out to Ro mm -hmm. that they actually come to the full sure. yeah, and that would help, and we'll make sure Aaron gets them as well. But I so I just looked at the email to see if I could read them out and see if there was anything we could address, but I don't have them, so so we'll address it when we have those details. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So if there's nothing else, we have no table matters tabled or deferred. We have no staff reports, no new business. We will call for adjournment. That this meeting of the Inclusivity and Diversity Advisory Committee be adjourned at 7.05.6. So are we coming together on the 20, on the, uh, was it? We'll just up for the 21st. 21st at 6.30. Okay, and it'll just be a short, brief update kind of call. Okay, uh, a mover and a seconder to adjourn, please. Ananda, I'm gonna pretend that your hand is up. Fair, <laughs> it's up. Aiden, yes? Sure. Okay.
you guys don't want to leave us you like <laughs> <laughs> okay all in favor thank you guys we'll see you in a couple of weeks and again if anybody has any input or a thought or something comes to you um just hit reply all and send it in and and uh, aaron will keep everything uh moving to our event coordinator <laughs>